Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect and behind me, we're gonna be changing how simple storage networks work and we're also gonna have a build time lapse. So I hope you guys are ready. So guys, today, starting off today's video is gonna be a little bit different because we have a time lapse. As you can see behind me, a little bit of spoiler, I did do a little bit more building and that's because we're gonna need a lot more space for some several or for several things that we're gonna be jumping into very soon. So, I hope you guys enjoy the time lapse. So I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse as much as I did making it. 
Um, yeah, this is the build. This is what this thing is now. Um, so on the outside, I think I'm going to do some dressing up of this a little bit more. We're also going to be adding some different things to this as we go. But this is basically to get things started for us. Um, it does have support beams and everything holding up the sides. I tried to make it look as su as supported as possible. But like I said, like we just don't have that that many resources. Um, we Our main resource that we have to build with um, is, of course, cobblestone. Um, but we can build out other things. I did use smooth stone and amber is actually a good glass like material. Um, and it lets you see and having different colors of it looks really cool, especially the coal amber. That looks really good, by the way. But all these different ambers add up. I think I might replace this uh, this cobblestone later on with some other material. That's why it's kind of in. It's there. It's like a placeholder almost until um, we get a nicer material to fill this in with. But as you can see, I have my power, my lava generation, everything split up. I'm going to do that a lot, by the way. I'm going to hit that thing. But we have flight, so I made an open area here in the center. So that way, if we ever need to fly, we can. Of course, this layer, I've got to fix this. We got water that is coming through. Um, I might just remove the water entirely and use those blocks that don't produce the water, um, the hydrogel. But yeah, as of right now, this is our lava production. This should be plenty fast enough for right now. Um, it is just basically waiting on cobblestone, uh, for some, some of it when we start using our power, this is kind of enough cobblestone, but I think we might need more later on. All right. So now that we have that done, I think today we should start working on getting into applied energistics and, uh, there's going to be a few things, a few prerequisites that's going to be required before we can do applied energistics. I really do want to move away from simple storage. Um, simple storage is nice and all. But auto crafting is, you can do it with simple storage networks, but it's not as intuitive, I think, as the uh, Planergistics um, auto crafting setup can be. And uh, Planergistics doesn't have any channels. So that's the that even cooler part, at least in this pack. There is no controller. So you have, you don't have to worry about channels or anything like that. So you can have a massive auto crafting setup with, you know, in and in, do it in a very compact space. Um, so getting into applied energistics, the main thing we're going to need to worry about getting started with is the presses. So we do have the presses. Now I don't know if AE stuff, no AE add-ons on in here. So it is just basically applied energistics. Um, I do want to automate the inscriber with Xnet though. That is going to be something we also do. Um, but yeah, presses, this is the big thing, right? This is how we get started. We have to make the inscriber of course. But that's not as difficult as I think getting just getting the base presses are. Um, there's a couple fluids here that's going to require us to get into nuclear craft just a little bit. And that is going to be the tough alloy and then the ferroboron. So these two materials, the ferroboron is going to be one we're going to have to really work on. These require materials that we have to kind of look for. I am going to make pigs for them. Um, that's probably going to be the best route for getting this resource, a constant flow of these two resources that it takes to make this which is boron and steel. Um, and yeah, that's actually not too difficult. Um, we can actually throw these, uh, not in liquid form. We can actually use their, make their uh, alloy here by just putting like the two uh, materials together. So boron and steel, we can just throw those together. Um, and that will make that for us instead of going the fluid route. Now for um, the tough alloy, that's where things get a little bit different. We have to use the ferroboron that we had to make for the other press, and we also need lithium. Lithium also needs to be combined with this, and I do believe that you can make the tough alloy. Um, it Actually, the tough alloy, I believe, has to be made inside this salt mixer. Is that correct? If I remember correctly, I think so. We might have to do that, or it's, it was a centrifuge. Let's take a look at the ingot. So, I think the tough alloy itself, I can make it differently. Ingot former? Yes. So we can just take the ferroboron ingots, and we can make tough alloy ingots as well with the alloy former. Um, so, all of this being said, right here, I'm gonna go the ingot route, uh, but you could do the fluid route. I'm gonna go the ingot route, and we're going to start working on that. So, um, like I said, to get started, I'm going to start first start on, you know, getting ourselves um, some tough alloy. 
because like I said, that's going to require everything, right? It's going to require us to get started with that. So we need lithium and ferroboron. Ferroboron, let's jump into that. We need steel and we need boron. So steel, I don't think I have too much of that. And boron, we don't have that much at all. Um, I think the best thing to do with this, right? is to look and see what gives us the most dust and to make pigs off of it. So the enrichment chamber is a way to do that. I don't think I have an enrichment chamber. I don't. So enrichment chamber. Let's go ahead and make this bad boy. That is gonna require some of our steel that we already have. We'll make a first tier and then we'll upgrade that. Looks like we need some redstone. And there we go, upgrade that bad boy. That'll be to the next tier. And then I know we can upgrade this one more time, but we can't upgrade it to the max because we just don't have the, uh, we haven't done the processes yet for it. But the, the getting it this far is actually just fine. Getting it to this point, that's perfect. By the way, I need to move this machine. It needs to go over here because this is where our mechanism stuff is located. So. I'll GPS it up. That'll give it some power. Honestly, you should just get some power cables. That way I don't have so many GPS things. But, eh. All right, so that should have some power. Actually, oh wait, that is right. Mechanism machines are the ones that actually cannot accept power this way. So we will need power cable. So let's grab some energy cable and we can go ahead and set this up. So yeah, all the mechanism machines are like that though. So we have the crushing, I might as well put that over here and over here and we'll put the smelting on top. Awesome. And then we'll go grab that GPS that we made. Actually the GPS should automatically be linked to these cables and yeah, we should have power. Perfect. <laughs> that worked out flawlessly. Um, so yeah, the Richmond Chamber. Let's go ahead and throw that boron in there and we'll set that to go to all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and get the pigs made. Um, so I'm gonna have to have a pig for each one and I need to figure out where what slot the pig goes into. So I'm gonna make one for boron, one for steel. It does require crushed. Um, and then I think we should be good because then it should start producing an unlimited amount of that for us. So now that I have the pigs all ready to go, we can kind of, uh, know that we have a good source of these base materials. Um, so you can see right here, I've already got a few truffles from that, a few truffles from steel, and a few truffles from boron. And it does give it to us in dust form, which is perfectly fine. So let's take this boron and let's work on just making ourselves ferro boron. Uh, we can use the dust in here to, and it'll still produce the ingots. That's the great part about the alloy furnace. So we just need some steel and some of that boron dust which we have in our inventory. This this literally just came from the, the resource hogs. So we put that in there. Also, I'm gonna take some speed upgrades, throw those in there. Um, also, with the speed upgrades, once we make these, uh, these energy efficient ones, so let's see, I, we might be able to do it now. I don't know. I think there was a specific resource we were missing. Ah, I think it was obsidian dust, maybe, and, cr and crushed uh, quartz. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, I guess, get that done. We do have a crusher, so let's take, let's do nether, or let's see, obsidian. Obsidian, and we need um, quartz, correct? And those will make that, that power efficient version. Um, if I put this in here, I believe the manufactory will actually produce four pulverized obsidian for us, which is really nice. And it also does the same thing for quartz. So also a very good machine to kind of get automated in, in the use. Um, and we can, of course, move that over here, and that'll help us get those energy cost upgrades because it does dramatically reduce this. Um, you can see the power multiplier is at times 25. If we put this in here, it would just be a power multiplier of 5, and a power multiplier of 5 would be times 20. Um, so you'd see 100 RF a tick, so it would cut this down by one-fifth of its current version. So very, very nice to have those energy upgrades in there. All right, so we also have our uh, our lithium 
And remember, we needed to add this um, to the tough alloy. So we need to add that to ferro boron in order to get tough alloy. We're gonna need nine tough alloy to make that one press. So the ferro boron, we need enough of. Um, lithium, it's gonna be, we get two a piece, right? So I guess five will be enough. So when we combine these together, this should give us a double output, I believe. Yeah, output times two with the ferro boron. And yeah, that'll give us 10 of these, um, this 10 of this alloy. And of course, I want to take some of these speed upgrades, throw that over there. I'm not too concerned about that. I'd rather that go. And that will make the tough alloy pretty fast. Pretty simple. Um, tough alloy is the thing we're going to need. And also, we're going to need uh, ferro boron, which we have enough of that. The only other thing we need for the presses um, is going to be uh, iron. So there's the ferro, which is one block worth. So nine, one block worth of the tough alloy. And we're gonna need some molten steel. So we need a, a nine of the steel and we also need nine iron. So we should have nine steel. Here we go, I'll go ahead and get nine of these just so we have a nice amount. So nine steel, nine ferro boron. We can go ahead and throw these stuff or this stuff in here. And we need iron. I can't actually I can't wait to get into applied energistics again. It's been a it's been a little while um, to actually really dive deep in a, into a pack that would would make make good use of that mod. So here's our here's our roundup. And last but not least, our tough alloy, in which we just need one removed from that. And there we go. So perfect, we have like a roundup of how, how tough these metals can get. Iron to steel, to ferro boron alloy, to tough alloy. Perfect, doesn't get better that, than that. So we also need a chisel, because if we take a look again at the presses, we're gonna find that these require a mold. And it says right here, will not be consumed when casting a mold. Um, so I'm guessing we can reuse it, so we only need one. So we need a diamond chisel, right, to make this, and it needs to be done inside of an inscriber. So that means we need to actually make some of this Fluix crystal. And I wonder if the recipe's changed. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be changed. So we can use an alloy furnace. So red stern, red, red stern, redstone and crystallized mineral chunks. So. Good thing we've done this mineral stuff before, um, and we need some redstone. So that's that's fairly easy right there. Look at that. And that is going to get us the Fluix crystals. And uh, that should now allow us to make a press. Or an inscriber, not a press. Good old fashioned inscriber. All right, so we need a couple pistons. Actually, we need a lot of everything, it looks like. It looks like we need a lot of wood. Turn into planks. Voila, and inscriber. And I'll eventually make more of these inscribers. This is just to get this party started, really. And voila, inscriber. Now this should work off of regular uh, power, regular RF, I believe. So if I was to just, you know, add it, oh, if I quit, I'm gonna hit those so many times. If I was to just put it here, yes, this thing will run off of RF um, and shouldn't need anything else. So that means, does this need a, a chisel, like a new chisel? We'll find out. So let's go ahead and put a chisel in here. Oh, maybe it, it is going to require like a specific, like brand new chisel. I guarantee it. There, yep, requires that. So that is going to do its process. Seems pretty fast as well. And that will get us our circuit. Next, all we have to do is get these guys melted and casted. And uh, that should do it. This says it will not take the cast. So if I just throw this in here, of course I'm gonna need my iron actually. Right. 
No. Full nine. So while this is melting, uh, we should get a full block. All you have to do is kind of wait, and then it will eventually cast. And from what it says, it will not consume that cast. So now that we have all of our presses, it means we can now make some more inscribers. So inscribers are what we're gonna be using to um, pretty much make everything for blind energistics. So I am gonna need a few of them. I'm gonna need one for each indefinitely. Um, and uh, yeah, these are, I feel like we're missing one. Maybe not. I think there's always been four. I always feel like I'm missing one when they're here, but I think it's because we make uh, five of these inscribers. So let's go ahead and look at this then. All right, so I need to just pretty much make a bunch of sticky pistons and we're just waiting on our other material that we had cooking over here. There we go. And that should get us about five. So now that we have our presses and everything ready to go, I just have them laid out here. What I'm gonna need to do is get ourselves some energy cable. Since these, these guys do not accept power directly from the uh, the wireless system. So all I gotta do is get a, let's see, GPS. Just one will do. And we're gonna get this thing hooked up and ready to go. All right, let's get a GP. Oh, I actually should have locked my GPS up here. I'll go ahead and set it on the middle one. Why not? All right, so now that our GPS is set, we should be able to get some power into this thing. And yes, these guys do require a little bit of power um, to run and uh, like over overall, it's not that much, but it does do the job. Um, so you can see, I've already messed around a little bit with getting some of these done because I didn't want to have to work on them too hard on camera. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to need. Uh, we're definitely going to need silicon or silicon. To get silicon or these plates, we need to take nether quartz and we just need to smelt the, the crushed nether quartz. To get the crushed nether quartz, you can throw this inside of a crusher, inside of a manufactory, um, just whatever you feel like doing. Uh, will work. So you can see I can take a bunch of quartz, like so. We can jump down here to our system, and I can throw this inside the crusher that I have, the advanced crusher. This guy will work hard at crushing all this nether quartz down, and then I can put that over into the, the smelting factory. Now, also what you can do with this quartz is you can take it and get yourself some sand and just add it to the uh, to the crushed nether quartz and that'll get you the nether quartz seed. You throw that inside your enriching factory and this will basically do the same process that, um, I don't know if you remember the applied energistics, is it even in here? Yeah, the growth crystal accelerators would do, except it does it really fast. And this is how you're going to make your, um, is it calcul the calculation press, I do believe? So this is how you're gonna make that calculation, which I have on the end here. Um, so as you can see, you can input items. I think if we get some item cables, some item imports, we should be able to automate this fairly easy, or at least semi-automate it, right? So I think that this right here, or this facing the other way, actually, we probably don't need it facing that way. That's gonna pick up my machine. But if we get, a, if we get like crates, or not crates, um, cabinets. So cabinets work on a, like a single inventory. So we can maybe do cabinets. Will a cabinet let me put items in? So you transfer rate. We can also, looks like white, like special, put like a whitelist or blacklist on our item. This is just not working. Um, okay, so yeah, we can open the cabinet. If I put this in here, is that gonna put it in the front? No, it doesn't. So it has to be fed through the face. 
Okay. So, I mean, that's still not that bad. I think what we might do is separate these guys a little bit more. Maybe put a, another block space in between each one of them. Or, can we open these up from the bottom? I don't think items... I think items can be input through the side. Okay, so items can probably go to the side. Let's do that then. Let's go... You here. Space. Or we can turn them sideways. So I think this setup actually looks pretty good. So what I have is cabinets just pushing into the side and it's gonna fill this side slot. And then we have items that is coming out this side, which is going to work just fine. So um, as long as I have the proper parts going in here, so like this one is gonna produce this, it'll fill this with our outgoing product. So not too bad there. Um, now this part is the is going to be a little bit different though so i can place this right here this guy is going to get three different things we got to get redstone in here right and it can only go one at a time so this is where my item pipes or item what is it extraction pipes this is where these things need to I have to change a little bit um, item. There we are. And yeah, our cabinets are going to be a little bit different because um, I think the output gets pulled through the face. So here and here, I think, can be specified an item. And I think the face can also be told an item. If I'm not mistaken, this will be the output. Can the top also be told to pull an item? I don't know. So let's say redstone here. We'll say that. And we'll put the other item here. And let's say the press, silicon presses go here. Okay, so that's going to put that there. I don't want that to happen. So let's pull this. Will that go there? Okay, so no, that goes in the pot bottom. So technically, this needs to move. All right, wait, that was correct, wasn't it? Yeah, that one That one was right on the top. It's the side one that has to change. Right, so we need to put this down here. This needs a, a hammer. So we gotta rotate this to face the top. And then we're also going to need, actually this needs to rotate to face the side. There we go, face this side. We can put a drawer, a cabinet there. And then I'm gonna need a torch. Good old redstone torch. To block this side off. And then that should now, we put that in there, go in the bottom and then at the top and then on the main part, we need another one. And that is going to go on the face and that will pull out the resulting product. So if I throw that in there or technically throw it up here, just to be sure it'll all go in there and then this will process. Ah, perfect. And then these two items go exactly where they need to go. All right. So this is a good example of showing you exactly how these uh, sides function. And with us knowing how these sides function, we are able to set up better automation for these processes, um, such as maybe using XNet to automate these processes, because I think it will be a lot better to do it that way. And the good thing is, is you can rotate these blocks to make XNet a little bit better if that's the, the way you want to go about doing it. Going about doing it this way would also work. And you can technically use XNet to automate this whole setup uh, with leaving it the way it is you would just allow for the automation of putting the items in here and carrying the resulting items and putting it into these cabinets here. Um, so I'm just using cabinets. You can use chests. It really doesn't matter uh, at this point, but it is a good example of how everything is going to work. Um, so over here, I just need to put the logic and then we can throw our engineer in here. And same goes for all this. Literally all we need is gold. 
we're going to need a bunch of gold. And this is where this makes this process a lot easier. And we're going to need tons of gold for this and diamond. I mean, not as much diamond as gold, but it definitely helps to have some diamond. Let's go ahead and make some. There we go. So yeah, we just throw that in there, throw the gold over here, throw our um, silicon over here. And for this one, it's yeah, the, the baby quartz <laughs> is what I'm gonna call it, um, which should be done processing over here. Oh yeah, we got tons of this stuff. This is made super easy with, <laughs> with all of these different things. Look at this, we can just throw these seeds and just throw these seeds in here and they're just gonna, man, we're just gonna have so much of these different materials. But this guys is going to get us into a Applied Energistics. And I think next episode is when we're gonna make our Applied Energistics system and start transferring things from this system, the simple storage that we've been using to an Applied Energistics system. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. It did take a lot of work to get everything in order for today's episode, and I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next episode, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.